Okay, Math 3, Unit 2, Section 4, Part C. We're going to talk about using um, square roots to solve. So, looking at this problem, if we go based on what we learned yesterday, what would I do to this in order to solve? We would want it to be set equal to zero. zero. And I would do that by doing what? Subtract 36. Subtract 36 to both sides. Okay. So x squared minus 36 equals zero. Okay. Now we always check for GCF. And is there a GCF here? No. No. So if you have two terms and there's no GCF, you're checking to see if they're squares. X is already a square. Can 36 be written as a square? Yes. Yes. What? Six. Good. Six squared. And so if they're both squares, we would then factor, and it would be x minus 6 and x plus 6. So you're like splitting up the squares. The x's go in the front. The 6's go in the back. 1 is a minus, 1 is a plus. Equals 0. And then what would I do next? Set them both equal to zero. Very good. Set them both equal to 0. So we'd have x minus 6 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0. And when I solve this side, I get x equals 6. And over here, I get x equals negative 6. Okay. So we also talked about, maybe we didn't, but um, if you have a positive and the negative of the same number, I could write that as x equals plus or minus 6. Yes? So like, what if you didn't want to do all of that? You just like use the square root. So we're actually talking about solving by square roots, so I'm showing you this process, and then guess what, we're going to do it again oh, okay. the other way. Okay, so <clears throat> you guys are just too smart for me in here. All right, so x equals plus or minus 6, so this was one way to solve it. Another way we're going to talk about is solving using square roots. So same problem, x squared equals 36. When you're solving using square roots, you always want to get the square by itself. So in this case, the square is by itself. Nothing's being multiplied in front. Nothing's adding or subtracting to the square. It's by itself. Once it is like that, you would take the square root of both sides. Now, when you are taking the square root of something, it becomes the absolute value of what is in the square root. <coughs> the reason is, is because in here, if I had a positive 6, a positive 6 squared would give me an answer of 6, right? And a negative 6 squared could also give me an answer of 6. Okay, and so when you're taking the square root of both sides, it's the absolute value of, what's the square root of 36? Six. 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 And then we know, again, that inside that absolute value, it can be a positive 6 or a negative 6. And so x equals plus or minus 6. In fact, just to give you like a side note, last unit, we would set this up, and this would be x equals 6 and x equals negative 6, but there's nothing to really solve there, so that's kind of why I skipped that step, but we're going to need that step for these other problems. Okay, so if you're looking at that, which one looks like it's less work easier to solve? The square form. The square form. Do you guys agree? Yes. And so while we could solve problems this way, it takes a little bit more work. So if you're able to just get a square by itself, this is much quicker. If you have trinomials, those are not squares. You would have to, you have to factor it, okay? So looking at this next problem, do you see how there already is a square here? So if we can get that square by itself, we can take the square root of both sides. Instead of multiplying everything out and distributing and setting it equal to zero, it just makes things more quick. Okay, so in order to get the square by itself here, what would I do? Divide by, divide by 3 is correct. So we divide by 3. I get x minus 4 squared equals, and 75 divided by 3 is 4, 25. <laughs> okay, close, close. Okay, um, so... Now the square is by itself. And so what I mean by that is this parenthesis is what the square is because it's being squared. So there's nothing on the outside of the parenthesis now. There's nothing like adding or subtracting to the square. The square is by itself. And so at this point, what will I do? 
you will take the square root of each side as it says in that step two. So when you take the square root, this part is the absolute value of x minus four equals, and what's the square root of 25? Five. five. Calissa, question. You could, you could totally subtract the 75 and then you would have to multiply out x minus four squared. So you'd have to write two parentheses, distribute, distribute. Then you would have to multiply through by the three and then combine like terms and then do your factoring. And it's gonna be a lot longer. So if you have something that's squared like this, it's best to get that square by itself and it's gonna reduce your amount of work by a lot. Okay. So at this point, we then set up our two equations, okay? So one equation is going to be what? X minus 4 equals 5, and the other will be X minus 4 equals negative 5, and we solve. So on the left side here, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and we get X equals 9. Over here, I add 4 to both sides, and we get X equals very good, negative one. So my answers here are x equals negative one and nine. Does anybody know how you could check to see if you had the right answer? Plug in the value for x and see if it makes 75 on both sides of the equation. Okay, and then you plug in nine, same thing. So if, you, if we just check this one of the numbers really quick, um, 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 squared is 25. And 25 times 3 is the same thing for negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4 makes a negative 5. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. And 25 times 3 is 75. Okay. Are you guys ready to try it on your own? Great. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute to try to work this out. You can work in your groups and talk through what you're doing. Okay, so give that one a try. And um, if you have the answer, I want to come by and check it. So raise your hand. Oh, and maybe this one's more difficult. You can't, there's not a square root of five. So there isn't a square root of five, so you just can't mm -hmm. simplify that part. So you'd have something plus the root five or something minus root five. Right. Make sense? For some of you? I would like you to tell me what my first step is on this equation or Liz just tell me very good adding three is the correct first step how many of you got the first step correct outstanding okay x plus three squared equals five okay next step Ethan what would you do next Very good. Take the square root of both sides. Okay. So we're taking the square root of both sides. When I take the square root, I it becomes what when my answer comes out? Absolute value of x plus 3 equals? Very good. Okay. So now that we're like this, notice the absolute values by itself. Okay. We set up our two equations. So your two equations are? x plus 3 equals root 5, and x plus 3 equals negative root 5. Are we okay with that? Okay, so now all we're doing is getting x by itself. So I subtract 3 to both sides. x equals negative 3 plus root 5. I can't put those together. 
I can't add a negative 3 and a root 5. I could multiply them, but I can't add them, okay? Same thing here, subtract 3 to both sides. X equals negative 3 minus root 5. Now, what do you notice about those two answers? Okay, good. They both have negative 3s. And then the only thing that's changing is in the center there. Do you guys see that? So you can leave your answers separate like this, or you could write it as x equals negative 3 plus or minus root 5. I would like you to see it both ways because sometimes on tests you'll see it as a single answer like this. This single answer means these two separate answers, okay? Just like how we had our plus or minus 6, that's actually a positive 6 and a negative 6. Are we good? Do we have questions? Okay, moving on. This spot right here is where a lot of students make mistakes. Does anybody have an idea as to the mistakes students make? What do you think they add the two and three? They add two and three together. Why can't we add two and three together? Very good. Three is actually multiplying to this parenthesis. So who knows the first step we would take on this problem. Brady. Not add two. Very good. Subtract two. Take care of that positive two by subtracting two to both sides. Well done. So we have three parentheses. X plus four squared equals 12. Okay, next step. Go ahead, close up. Yes, now we can divide three. And what's the purpose of dividing by three? What am I trying to do? Very good. Get the square by itself. Exactly. Okay, divide by three. X plus four squared equals four. Okay, next step. Who wants to help me out? Okay. Very good. Take the square root of both sides. Okay, can someone tell me what I write now that I'm taking the square root of both sides? Absolute value x plus 4 equals 2. Does everybody understand how we got 2? We didn't really talk through that. But I got 2 because 4 is actually 2 times 2. And when you're taking the square root, you're taking on one of the numbers. You have a pair of numbers, and that pair comes out as one answer, right? Okay. Who knows my next step now? Lily. Exactly. X plus 4 equals 2. X plus 4 equals negative 2. And we solve. <clears throat> when we do that here, hold on, sorry. We get subtract 4, and my answer is x equals negative 2. We subtract 4, and we get x equals negative 6. So my answers are negative 2 and negative 6. Any questions? Yes. Next step, next problem? OK. <laughs> Calissa, what's my first step? Not yet. You knew on the previous problem. It's the same thing. So we can't do 29, 29 minus 2. You were thinking 29 was part of the problem. OK, so what am I going to do? Exactly. Subtract 29 to both sides. OK, so I do that. Negative 2, parenthesis, 2x minus 3 squared equals negative 24. Next step, anybody? Divide by negative 2. Okay. 2x minus 3 squared equals? 12 is correct. Nicely done. Now what? Very good. Take the square root of both sides. When I do that, what happens with the 2x minus 3 when we take that square out? Very good. Of 2x minus 3 equals, now we don't know the square root of 12. It, or if you plugged it into a calculator, it be a decimal. We want to leave it in root form. <coughs> Could it simplify it all? 
What two numbers multiply to be 12? 14. <laughs> okay, either 3 and 4 or 6 and 2. Okay, either way we're going to end up with the same thing. If I do 3 and 4, I'm 4 then breaks down to 2 and 2. Do you see I have a pair of 2s? So I circle my pair and I usually put a box around whatever's left over so that I can like visually see everything. This pair of twos becomes just a two and then anything that doesn't have a pair stays in the root box. That's why I box it, stays in that root box and that is three. Do we have to do it that way? You have to get to two root three. Okay, yeah. Okay, but you don't have to do it my way. You can do whichever way makes sense no, to you. No, because I did the other way, like the third See? column. I just kept it carrying Oh, you just kept the root yeah. 12. Yeah, so you want to simplify your roots if you can. So root 5 I couldn't simplify because there was, you can't break it down? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Good job. All right, so splitting into two equations, 2x minus 3 equals 2 root 3, and 2x minus 3 equals negative 2 root 3. Um, in order to solve here, what will I do now? Nope. Good. Add 3? No, it's okay. And so we get 2x equals 3 plus 2 root 3. Can I add the 3 and the <coughs> 2 root 3 together? No. The reason is, is because this 2 is being multiplied by root 3. So in order to add something together, they would both have to have a root 3. If it doesn't, we can't add them together because this is really saying 2 times root 3 and we have no idea what that actually is. Okay? And then in order to x by itself, we can divide by 2. Now, a lot of people want to reduce these 2s. You cannot. You can only reduce if the 2 could go into this number and also the 3, and it can't. So you have your 3 plus 2 root 3 divided by 2. Okay, same thing on the other side. We add 3. We have 2x equals 3 minus 2 root 3. In order to get x by itself, what do I do next? Divide by 2. Can I reduce this 2? No, because this 2 needs to go into both of those. Okay, so we have our two separate answers, or we could write this as what? Plus or minus. 3 plus or minus 2 root 3 all over 2. Okay, do we have questions? Okay, does anybody notice anything about these last problems? Fractions. Yeah, they are using the quadratic formula. The nice thing is, is that it's all written out for you. All we're going to do is simplify. Okay? Now, lots of people simplify in different ways. For me, I like to write the least amount that I have to. Okay? So, if I were you, but you don't, you're not me, so you can do it a different way. Um, I simplify under the root. So, what is 7 squared? 49. Okay. Then, when you're multiplying, we're going negative 4 times 2, which is... And then negative 8 times negative 4 makes a 32. positive 32. Okay, and 2 times 2 is 4. four. <laughs> so when I rewrite this now, we have x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root. And what's 49 plus 32? 81. 81 is correct. <laughs> Divided by 4. Are we okay? Do you want me to go back? Do we, is there, is there a square root of 81? No. So really x equals negative 7 plus or minus 9 divided by 4. Can I simplify this? No. Yes. Yes, because they're whole numbers. I can add whole numbers together, right? And so at this point, because it can be simplified, I would separate it into my two equations. So one would be negative 7 plus 9 divided by 4, and the other one would be negative 7 minus 9 divided by 4. What is negative 7 plus 9? 2. 2 over 4, and does that reduce? No. 
Yes. Yes. X equals one half. What is negative seven minus nine? Negative 16, good. Divided by four is? Negative four. Negative four. Um, just as like a little side note here, and I try to give you guys some of the mental math things that I do, but for negative seven and negative nine, I know that it takes one to get to negative 10. And so it's like I'm taking one from seven to get it to negative 10, and then there's six left over, and that's how I get negative 16. Because I have my negative 10 and negative 6, which is negative 16. Okay. Or you could use a calculator. All right. Okay. So we're going to do one more like this because I don't think you need a ton of practice. Maybe you do. We're going to go this middle one. What is negative 6 squared? 36. Okay. Now, you can multiply negative 4 times 4, which is negative 16, and then you have to multiply that by negative 5, and a lot of you might not be able to do that in your head. When you are multiplying numbers together, you can multiply <coughs> in any order. For me, it makes more sense to me to multiply 4 times negative 5, which is negative 20, and then negative 20 times negative 4 makes positive 80. <laughs> Does that make sense? So when you're multiplying multiple numbers together, you can multiply them in any order that you want to, and you get the same answer. That is the commutative property, just so you know. Okay, and two times four is? Two times four is eight. Okay, good. All right, so X equals six plus or minus. Now someone already did this for me. 36 plus 80 is what? 116. Again, my mental math. Just so you know how I'm doing this in my head. Of 36, it takes 20, right, to get to 100, which means I have 16 left over, so that makes 116. So it's like I'm splitting it up to make 100 and then seeing what's left over. I'm just trying to help you guys out with mental math. Okay, now, we have more mental math coming up because 116, we want to break that down. Now, because this is an even number, I know it's divisible by 2. So if I am cutting 116 in half, I can cut 100 in half, which is what? 50. And I can cut 16 in half, which is 8. eight and 50 plus 8 is? 59. 8. <laughs> 58 is the correct answer. Good. Okay, I'm going to split that in half again. Okay, half of 50 is how much? 25. 25 and half of 8 is? 4. And 25 and 4 is? 29. 29. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you guys see how you can do the mental stuff in your head by like breaking into different numbers? Okay, this is 29. I got confused when we were saying different numbers. Okay, are we good? So, do you still have a pair of twos? So, we would write this as 6 plus or minus 2 root 29, because that's left over, stays in our root box, divided by 8. Now, I told you on the last problem. We, or not the last one, this one, we could only reduce if the three numbers in front of the root, if all of them were divisible by the same number. And this one, are they all divisible by the same number? Yes, they are. They're all divisible by what? Two. So six divided by two makes three. Two divided by two makes one. Eight divided by two makes four. four. So we get three plus or minus. You can write one root 29, or you could just write root 29. You don't have to write the one all divided by four, and that's my answer. Okay, any questions?